The Word of God is very important in our life, and we have been in the study on the book of Romans since April of 2019, which tells you we've been there for quite a while, haven't we? But it's been good, and we are concluding in the chapter, in chapter 13 today. And, uh, but this, what we're looking at really is crucial, important in our life, and I really want to encourage you today to pay close attention and let God move on your heart. I'm talking today about clothed in Christ, clothed in Christ. Romans 13, 11 through 14. I believe the overarching theme of Romans is the righteousness that comes from God. I mean, you look at what God has done for us and the provision that he's made through coming and dying on a cross that we today could taste of his righteousness and then have that, in right, that righteousness imputed into our lives. Oh, listen, it's the truth of God that justifies guilty, lost sinners like you and I. And where we were separated, alienated from God, I'm glad God drew us into himself by his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And realizing all this process, understand this whole entire process of redemption today is by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone so you can't have it by any other means today. any church is telling you today well just do the best you can that doesn't work or go on a baptistry and be baptized listen you can be staked out in water and it won't save you the fact of the matter is today is by grace alone through faith alone and today in Christ alone for by grace are you saved through by faith today for by grace are you saved today by faith in Christ You've got to put your confidence in him. It's not in works. It's not in us. It's not in what we do. It's not in all of our noble way, ways and deeds and kindness and everything that we do. It's what Christ has done for us. So we need to find today, when in looking at this and grasping this, we need to see today where we are in the scope of, of redemptive history. We've got to see first and foremost, have we today obtained that salvation in knowing Christ as our Savior? We need to be reminded today... We need to be reminded today of the time in which we live in. You say, well, preacher, you've got to realize the times we're living in are pretty tough times. Yeah, they sure are. We need to be reminded that also not only to just look at the times that we're in, but today we need to be reminded to make Jesus a part of our daily lives. And I think today a lot of Christians are failing to do that because we're not centering our lives on Christ. We're centering our lives on all the distractions that we are having thrown before us every day. And listen, you say, well, you can't hide from it. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be the main focus of your life. It doesn't have to be the controlling issue of your life today. You can thank God today that you can call upon his resources and everything that God has and everything God is, God will work in your life. So thank God that we can live a life in Christ. I hear people saying, well, you know, it's just hard being a Christian these days. Well, tell me, bless God, why is it so hard for you to live for Jesus? But you know these Democrats and these Republicans, what's making that so hard? For you to live for Christ. That should be motivational to make you want to live more for Christ. For Pete's sake. I mean really today. This is what today. Jesus is capable of doing in our life. To raise us above the bar of this world. And today that we are distinctive. The day that we are belonging to the Lord. And our lives today have meaning. Our lives have a message. Our lives has a message. And we need today to declare that message. So he gives us. He gives us the power. All the power that we need to love. Amen. But preacher come on. We're living in a world inundated with hate. That's even more reason for you to live the love of Jesus. Amen. So we must thank you. Well, here's what we've got to do. We've got to learn to exercise that power that lives within us today. That power, this radical force that God has put in us today that can make a radical difference in the lives of people. That can change. You know what? By, by today involving this radical change that Christ has worked in your life, it can make you today an instrument of change in our world to change everything in and around us today that we are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might amen that's what God wants to do in your life 
These changes that are wrought will work in our homes, it will work in our lives, it will work in our communities, it will work in our nation, it will even work in the world. But you know, I see the condition of the world and it's telling me an alarming issue here that Christians are falling short of what God has called us to be. All because, we, we listen, we can do this all because of a risen Savior today is available to us that he can live through us. I got Jesus in my heart, preacher. Well, that's wonderful, but what is he doing in your life? Just not declaring, well, I'm a Christian. You know, you can wear lapel pins and crosses around your neck and you can carry banners and do all this other stuff. But listen, that's not what makes you a Christian. Christ wants to live through you. Got that? Just not in you. If he's in you, he's got to live through you. It's not like that little course goes back some years ago. It's Jesus on the inside working on the outside. And you've got to let him work in your life today. Well, I'm doing the best I can. Oh, come on. Get real. You're not. None of us have achieved or aspired to being the best we can be for Christ. And folks, we need today to really rally around God's word and let God's word start to work through us. I want you to take the powerful word of God that you have with you. And if you don't, just follow along with me today. I'm in Romans 13. I'm going to pick up with 11 and I'm going to read down through 14. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. That's about half ready. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. Come on, y'all. The quieter you are, the longer I preach. <laughs> and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation, listen to this word, our salvation is nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Man, I tell you, that's, that's powerful preaching right there. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting. The world needs to hear this one, don't they? Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just say, let me say that again. Why don't you say that with me? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. May God bless the reading of his word today. Understand, I want you to grasp this. My desire for you today is that the joy of the Lord truly as Nehemiah proclaimed will be your strength. May we experience today something that God wants to do in our lives. It's called an awakening. May he awaken us today and bring our attention to the fact of Christ Jesus and who brings us hope in a hopeless world. If you've watched any news anytime recently, you know that we're living in a very precarious situation in our world, in our nation, and even in our communities. But I want you to know today that this passage of what we just read, we have come to a passage that has changed the course of Christian history, and this was over 1,600 years ago. Now, if Christ has begun, let me understand this. If Christ has begun then a work in us, he will complete that work. Am I right? Amen. So I pray today that this passage will speak to your soul today, not to your flesh, but to your soul today, and I want to show you something today. I want to show you a little illustration here of a man. The man was known as St. Augustine. Before he was St. Augustine, he was Sinner Augustine. <laughs> kind of like us, huh? He was doing uh, as many people would do. He was chasing success. He was climbing the ladder, and he was living the dream, and all those cliches that we hear today about people trying to aspire and get to the top in life. Inch by inch, he was going up the cultural ladder. A young man, he was going places. I mean, they would look at him and say, man, he's a sharp-dressed man. Man, he's got it all together. Man, he is really doing well. Man, look at his house. Man, look at his car. Man, look at that wad of money in that man's pocket. He's got it all. 
Well, there's a lot out there today that gives that impression. And you know what? When you peel back the reality of life, there's nothing that's void. It's nothing but an empty shell. It has the appearance of. It's kind of like a mirage. You understand what a mirage is? It's an illusion. It's not real. And you know, we may put that image on, but when we peel back and look at our soul and look at our hearts and look at our lives of who we really are, we find there's nothing there but emptiness and sin. So on a sunny day, what happened to St. Augustine was the thing that happens to all of us. There was a big hole in his heart. There was a lack There was no Jesus. So it was a sunny day and he was walking through a garden. He decided to sit down on a bench where he was contemplating his life. And, you know, he was looking at all I have and all I've done and all I am. But then it kind of ended in despair because all that stuff was temporal. It all falls away. And, I mean, in a fleeting moment, you can be on top of the world. And the next moment, you can be down in the dust of the ground. So he found himself in a state of despair. He, he heard, though, it was a voice of what sounded like little children. And this voice was saying, take up and read. Well, this really made an impression on his heart. It grasped him. So he went, he got up, he went back. And when he entered and he found on the table, he found a copy of Paul, the Apostle Paul's writing. And he opened it up. He just opened it up randomly. And his eyes focused on the passage that is found in Romans 13. He said, oh, that was just a chance. No. It was God's divine appointment. He read what it says in verse 14. That said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the flesh thereof. A lot of people in the world today, a lot of people even in the ranks of church are pursuing the flesh, pursuing the world, pursuing gain, get, bigger this, bigger that today. Well, you know what this did to St. Augustine, it pierced his heart with the light of the word, and he, it cast the light of Christ upon his heart. And at that very moment, God then poured assurance and faith into his life. There was a monumental change. I'm telling you, when Christ works a life in your life, it's nominal. It's just not get by. It's a mega change that God works in your life. It's radical. It's real. It's Christ. And oh, what a difference it'll make in your life when you let Christ be God of your life. Amen. So the shades of darkness were shattered. And from that very day and forward, this sinner named Augustine is now called St. Augustine. That's an actual story. That's real. The work of darkness, what happened? Those works of darkness were cast off. And the armor of light was put on. That's exactly what happens in salvation, isn't it? It's that robe of flesh is cast off in one sense of the speaking. What was controlling us, the desires, the ambitions, the wants, the needs, everything that we're coursed in and trained in by the world, in schools, in thought, in everything that we do. We perceive that if you're going to be successful in life, it's how much you got and how big you got. That's not true. It's how big God is in your life. That's real, the mark of success in your life. How big is God in your life? How great is God in your life? Well, preacher, I'm trying to get through. You've sung that song long enough and it's time you put it away. It's time you stop feeling sorry for yourself and trying to get by and hold on and all this other junk that we use in terminology. It's time we start living what we say that we believe and that's the word of God. Amen. In your life, have you ever felt today a deeper need? Have you today, maybe you're in that position right now, that you want to be a person of light. You want to really make a mark. You want to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to live the life. Are you really today? Are you really living the life that will glorify God? I mean, really today, swap places. If you were God and you were looking at you and the way you're living Would you be pleased? Would you say, keep doing it, buddy? Would you say, oh, my. Get your perspective right. 
Get your life right. Get your focus right. You know, above all the noise and the clamor of today, as Christians today, we must ask then, how do we live? I mean, I've given you and painted you a picture here, and you're saying, so then how do we live that life? How can we live that? We need answers today. And we have answers for this question by declaring, I will live my life for the sake of God's glory. That's how you do it. You live your life for the sake of the glory of God. I will put my faith in Christ. I will anchor my faith in Christ. I shall not be moved from my faith. Amen. And the finished work that he accomplished at the cross. For his grace. I'm telling you. His grace has saved us. If you're here this morning, you're saved. Shout amen. Amen. If you're saved, you're saved by grace. And that grace has saved you. And I trust today that that grace not only has saved you, but I assure you that that grace will sustain you. So this passage today will give you grace to do what? It will motivate you to live your life for his kingdom. What are you living your life for? What's the focus of your life? It's the kingdom of God founded today in Christ Jesus today. That's the kingdom, the only kingdom that's going to last. The things of this world are going to pass away. They're fleeting. They're passing away right now. But of his kingdom, I'm glad the word of God says, of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And I'm glad I'm a part of that kingdom. So I didn't wake up this morning panic-stricken and worried. I didn't go to bed that way last night either. I tell you, I went to bed with peace in my heart and I woke up with a joy in my soul. Because today, I'm not controlled by what is happening in the exterior of my life of this world. I'm controlled by the power of God that lives and dwells in me and I want my life to be today a radiant glory to His praise that my life will point people to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, listen, friends, listen, brothers, sisters in Christ. Life is worth the living in Christ. Amen. Therefore, I bring you to our theme. Life in Christ. (laughs) Life in Christ is a life worth living. Woo! Life in Christ is a life worth living. Now, some of y'all are sitting there and it doesn't look too radiant in your face, so you better brighten up a little bit. Life in Christ is a life worth living. Amen. Amen. We're so controlled by our exterior of life, everything that's going on in the world today. I'm telling you, therefore, we realize in that fact today, we say, well, I agree. Life in Christ is worth the living today. So how do we live? How do we live this life in Christ? I'm so glad you pointed that question to me. And so let me give you several points that will help you. One today, we live with full awareness. You can't close your eyes to what is happening in this world. We live with a full awareness today. We realize what is going on in our world. We know that this time, this season that we're in, we know what is occurring before us today. One of the admonitions that Paul basically gives is that we have been placed in a particular time at a point in time in history for a particular purpose today. We are to live our lives to the glory of God. We're not controlled by what's going on in the streets of our cities. We're not controlled by what's going on in the, in the insanity of Washington, D.C. <laughs> We're not controlled by any of those things today. For some of you, you, you don't need to get all hopped up in the news cycle, and you've been doing that. I mean, you got an addiction going on. Well, preacher, I don't use drugs and alcohol, but you got an addiction. I can't get my nose out of Fox News. I can't get my nose out of CNN News. I can't get my nose out of whatever news it's on. That stuff is doing nothing but just depressing you. (laughs) Yeah. I'm telling you, you got your nose stuck in the poison of the news media so much today, it's keeping you steeped in anxiety. You worrying your little poor self to death. 
You're so worried, what's Trump going to do? What's Biden going to be? What, what's Nancy Pelosi going to do next? Who cares? They're not in control. God is. Amen. They may think they're running this country, but I'll tell you who sits on the throne. His name is almighty, everlasting, eternal God. And nothing is going to change that. Amen. Amen. We know what is going on, and we know what is the fact, and we know today that we need to trust in Him. We trust in the sovereign God because He is a God, as I said, who's in control. And you know what He's giving us today? Here's what we need to see. Listen to me. This is what we need to see. We need to see the opportunity today to answer today the world's demands today. And you know what the world needs to hear? They need to hear about a Jesus that died on a real cross and made real atonement available to every person that would come to Him. I think back to Mordecai and Esther. And she had been put in a position for, and this is what Mordecai said, you've been put in this position for such a time as this. We need to be aware, yes, of the anxieties and the pressures. And we need to be aware of the hatred. We need to be aware of the false gospels that's giving people false answers and a false hope today. We need to see today the broken promises today that comes with wrong solutions. It's not going to provide nothing but emptiness in lives. We need to realize today as a church that we have today a golden opportunity today to point a clear path about the love of God to a world that needs to see this path instead of the path that is going down that is called destruction. We realize today the only love that is a, that's found in God is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to keep pointing to the righteousness of Christ, right? We need to keep pointing today to the fact of an atonement that Jesus has made available to every person that would come to him. We need to point today to a resurrection that Jesus arose triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. And today, when you get all of that, you've connected to the gospel, and the gospel gives us hope. So therefore, we fight off anything today that threatens the free grace of God found at the cross of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. We live today in a full awareness of the time that we are in. But this time we are in is a passing time. And this too shall pass. We're living for a better day. Amen. Secondly, we live with a new urgency. It seems in these days that people have gotten, gotten really, uh, you know, to be quite blunt about it, it seems like today that people have gotten bored with God. <laughs> I mean, it appears people have put, has, has put the Bible down and, and taken up politics. I'm talking about Christian people. If you're more enamored today with a movement of what's going on than you are with Christ, you're stumbling. You're waning. You're falling. You're drifting. And I'm going to tell you real bluntly, you need to wake up. You need to wake up to the reality. You need to wake up. And there are too many lethargic Christians and believers running around today on planet earth. And they're not doing nothing for Jesus. Oh, they got all the look and appearance of, but peel back. And there's nothing there. They want to make people think they're trusting Jesus, but they don't have no trust in Christ. If your life is packed with distractions, preoccupations, and then today, you know what? I'm going to tell you what's happening to you. You are facing forgetfulness of God. You have forgotten there is a real God, and he will deal with you. Amen. I'm not preaching mean. I'm preaching truth. There's a complacency today. Look, you know why the church is in such a dis such a chaotic mess is because there's a, con a complacency in doctrine. There's a, for a, for a forgetfulness, a forgetfulness of the gospel, and there's a rejection of holiness. Now, what does all that come down to? In other words, today, if we could take that, put it in the sifter, and bring it out, here's the end product: compromise. We've compromised the gospel. We've chosen to do what is convenient. What's the easy way? The easy way is the wrong way. 
Complacency leads to compromise. So this, what happens when you compromise? You forget the holiness of God. So we sit back and we say, well, that's okay. So they pledge allegiance to the flag so they take God out. Well, I can tell you, they can take him out of everything they want to. They can take him off the currency. They can take him off the pledges. They can take him off everything. But they cannot take him off the throne. And you know what else? They can't take him out of your heart. But if he's in your heart, you cannot shut up about him. You can't be quiet about him. You can't be complacent about him. You can't compromise with him. you got to take and start living a life that God is honored and glorified in your living today. Listen, get, up, uh, get out today of this middle of the road Christianity today and start looking today of how the world... You know what's happened today? The world has just kind of seeped itself right into the church. And the church has become so worldly and the world has become so churchy, you can't tell the difference. It all is transparent. So many churches today are falling for this new cultural movement of political, political, the political movement. The only movement I know today is the movement that God moved in my heart and my life and I haven't been the same since. That's the only movement I want to be a part of today. At churches today, we've got to learn to stay true to being gospel-centered today. We've tried to rewrite the Bible. Why do you re- need to rewrite what God has already rewritten? Why don't you start living it for a change? <laughs> we are followers of Christ. And if we're followers of Christ, then that's do, let's do what we say that we are. If you are followers of Christ, then you what? Follow Christ. You live for him. Watch your laziness in Christianity. We're giving the tools to grow. We're giving you the tools to grow here in this church. We're doing this year. I know it has been absolutely, totally, completely... Make your hair stand up insane. So what do we do? A lot of churches just sit down, close the doors. Well, that's all, I mean, that's all, you know, what's all we can do? Oh, really? So what did we do? This church jumped and rallied to the cause. We, we provide you Bible studies. We provide you where you can read through your Bible in the entire year. Sheets are back there on the back. You can take them home with you. And you say, well, it's already September. You can catch up. We, we also provide you a Bible study every Wednesday night at 5 o'clock. And the nice thing about that is, well, I can't see it at 5. You can go back and watch it at 5 in the morning, 5 at night, any other time you want to watch it. And we've been on a series, and it's been absolutely insane. And the questions are rolling in. Ask me anything. And I'll tell you, you have surely been doing that. And I love it. During this pandemic, we have not missed one Sunday of worship. Yeah, we spent 12 weeks out in the parking lot. That's okay. Yeah, we're back in the church and we're socially distancing. We're barking off pews and we're spraying, cleaning, fogging, doing everything else and bumping elbows and wearing masks and the works. But, hey, listen, we're still in the presence of God, aren't we? We've even gone to the point that I got another thought that hit me this morning, Tiff. Anyway, we, we, we've lost here several weeks ago a new website that has just a plethora of information for you to use to grow in. And you can go to and get information about. We, we've made prayer for others and for yourself available where you can put your prayer requests. And we get them. And I mean, you know, we've got a TV station that's pumping out the gospel 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, really? Are you using the tools? Not to mention you've got a glorious word called the word of God. Apply it and use it in your life. The church does good things, but... We today should be a dynamic force on this planet today. We are, we are and we should be today pillars and really the ground for the truth of God's word that is proclaimed here. Amen. And not only is it proclaimed here, but also we are to proclaim it out there. Hello, y'all. So therefore today, what are we to do? We're to tell the truth about God's love, about his redemptive plan, about the gospel that today will come to us and change our lives. We need today to preach repentance today. We need to tell the truth today that God expects holy living. Point three, we live with complete confidence in Christ. We need to live with a confidence of who Jesus is. Who is he in your life today? Is he just your fire escape so you don't go to hell? Is that it? Is that it? Is that all? 
I hope it's more than that. Our hope and our confidence is in Christ. The old songwriter wrote, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So Paul is pointing to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when he says, For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Do you realize we're living? Listen, I'm teetering right here on the edge of this platform. You realize today we're teetering on the very day that Jesus is coming back. Well, how long do you think it's going to be? Could be before we leave here today. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's quicker than the snap of my finger. So we've got to think about salvation in three tenses. One, salvation is past. That's the justification that you enjoy today. Jesus has completed salvation and he makes it available to every person that will call upon the Lord. I asked you a question today and I'm going to be blunt about it. Are you saved? You either are or you're not. There's no in between. And if you're not, then you need to get saved before you leave this church today. Salvation present is sanctification. Jesus is continuing to do a work in you. If he's doing a work in you, then that work will show through you. You're growing stronger in Christ's likeness every day. You're being more made more and more like Jesus. Then salvation future is called glorification. Glorification. So therefore today, this is what Paul is talking about here in that particular verse. This is a day and there is a day when, you know what? I got some good news for you. Maybe I can get a shout out of you on this one. You realize there's coming a day when we'll be done with all the struggles, all the suffering, all the hatred, all the disease, all the anxiety, all the discouragements, all this mess. Thank God when you put your faith in Jesus one day, we'll be done with all of that. There's a new day coming. For we shall see him and behold his glory and we shall worship him forevermore. Hallelujah. Fourth point, we live with a strong hope. The day is at hand. The reigning Christ Jesus will come. And he's going to receive people in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Yes, the Lord, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever. Woo! Could it happen today? It sure could. Are you ready? He will bring rejoicing to his church. But let me tell you, when he comes, he may bring rejoicing to his church, but he's going to bring judgment to his enemies, to those who have rejected him. This is our hope. This is our hope. His coming is our hope today. I awakened this morning with the hope that today could be the day. Oh, preacher, really? You really think he can? And he just might. So Christ coming gives me hope for all, all this craziness is, is going on in our world. All the looters and the killing and the bickering and the shooting and the hatred. Thank God this is not going to last. It's going to be over one day. Amen. The best thing to do until then, if they commit the crime, let them do the time. As a pastor, I'm telling you, I see struggles. I see what people are going through. I see the pains that they're going through. You say, well, you know, this pandemic's been on since, you know, earlier this year. And so haven't you just been sitting at home and hanging out in the office here? No, I've been out in the highways and the hedges, bad in the trenches and doing what I do any other time. And I've been doing it for the last 30 years. But I see people going through some tough times. Tough times with cancer, tough times with catastrophes, tough times with depression, tough times with defeat, tough times with anxiety, some tough times with emotional scarring. I see people going through tough times. All these things, and you know what? One day will be no more. All these things one day will be no more. Why? Because Jesus has the last word. Amen. Praise God. And if you're a believer today, you today can thank God that you're saved. And if you're not, thank God that you're still having a second chance. God is still affording you the opportunity to come to him. Last point, and this is it. We live with a clear difference. Paul said we cast off darkness and we put on the armor of light. We don't, we don't live in sin. 
We don't live in the sins of this world. We're not controlled by that. We don't live as heathens. We don't live immoral and in shame. Be careful today. Don't try to justify your sin. Why don't you try to do something else with it? You want to get rid of it? Try repenting of it. Sinning is, is not normal. Are you saying I'm not normal? If you're sinning, you're not. Because sinning is darkness. And you know what Jesus does? He pulls you out of darkness. David said he inclined to me and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my foot upon a rock. You come out of darkness and you stay out of it. Amen. Because for the life in Christ is a life worth living. Are you living that life today? Are you saved? Is there a difference in your living today since you invited Christ in your life? Have you ever come to Christ to begin with? If not, I invite you to do it right now. Bow your heads. If you're sitting and you're watching this in your home or your workplace or wherever you're at today by the media Facebook, and you're not saved, I invite you right now to pray this prayer with me and mean it with your heart. See today, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're still living in darkness, you're still a sinner. And Christ is inviting you to salvation. Would you receive him today, recognizing that you're a sinner, understanding that Jesus died for you on the cross? And then this process that we're going to do right now is the deliverance. This is the salvation. Pray with me this. Dear God in heaven, in Jesus' name, I'm a sinner. I need your salvation. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Save me in Jesus' name. I'll do nothing to embarrass, humiliate, nor hurt you. I won't come to you. I won't call your name. I'll simply keep you close to my heart in prayer. But if you prayed that prayer a moment ago, would you just slip your hand up right now and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer. Thank you. Anyone else? Pastor, I prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer. Now, how about you, Christian? What need is residing in your heart? Are you really living your life for Christ? Maybe you've got struggles that you need today help with. Maybe you got burdens that's on your life. Maybe today you need direction. Maybe today you just need to say, you know, as for me and my house, I'm going to be like Joshua of old. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you bring your family, you bring yourself to this altar and say, Lord, help me to live that life. You've got today to make the step. Would you stand?